It's uh, something totally different than I've ever done before. I'm eight years into professional hockey, almost uh, 500 games, and uh, you know I've totally changed my shooting style. It's uh, starting to become starting to become natural. Uh, the feeling and whatnot. It's it's weird when uh, when I do shoot off balance, which uh, it doesn't happen a whole lot anymore with uh, with the new stuff we're doing. Uh, totally centered, totally balanced, and uh, I can really feel it now. The difference between when I shoot my old way. And I do fall off. I know right away that uh, that I need to correct it because uh, it's starting to feel natural. Uh, the new way of shooting. So when we really knew that the shots were working really well for Matt was when we had the goalie out without any traffic and shooting from 25 or 30 feet out. Uh, when you can get to the point where you're shooting the puck and the goalie can't see the puck coming off your stick, uh, we we're really setting the bar at a, at a whole different level. Well, I guess a couple uh, pivotal moments. Uh, the rink guys here aren't going to be too happy, but uh, shattering two panes of glass was. Uh, it's pretty cool for me. One of the biggest keys to any shot release and improving a shot release is how the player catches the puck. If you can catch a puck soft, you can release the puck in the same motion. So as soon as the puck comes in, you can shoot it right back out or you can uh, send it right back out. So as soon as the puck comes in, you can send it right back out. On the soft catch, basically what you want to do is you want to catch the puck from inside your front foot. So what happens is it allows you then to pull the puck in line with your back foot so that keeps you balanced. What happens to most players is they catch the puck off the back foot so their stick is when they receive the puck their stick is back here so that pulls them off when they catch the puck and now they're off balance so that's why you see this type of a shot where they're totally off balance when they're shooting. The key to changing that is making sure that their feet, their catch is off the inside foot. That allows them to catch it here, keep the puck inside of their center of gravity, which allows them then to either fire the puck from here or to shoot off of this, off of this inside foot by staying balanced. And that's why your shoulders can then face the net and you can follow through directly towards the net. As soon as you allow the puck to come outside of your skates, you're now at risk to being off balance and your shoulder is going to fall away from the shot. And that's where, where most players make the mistake when they shoot. I'm shooting wristers from the blue line and uh, you know, getting a heck of a lot of uh, force behind that puck and uh, end up putting a couple through the glass. You know, those are moments there we kind of had a laugh about them uh, this summer and uh, you know, right there I kind of I drove the point home. When you're shooting in stride, one of the most important parts about shooting in stride is you don't want to break stride. You want to hide your release point inside of your skating. So one of the most important points is as I'm skating through that I keep the puck in a shooting position all the time. And then what happens is when I come over the top on that next shot, all of my weight now is into the shot. And it allows me then to get all my weight bend on the stick right in this level right here. So when I start to cross my feet or if I, whether I'm crossing my feet or skating in a straight line, it allows me then to shoot right off of that inside foot. Or the same with the outside foot. If I was in stride and I have to shoot off the other foot, it's no problem because all of my weight is traveling in this direction and I can shoot it in stride because I keep the puck in a shooting position. When you study the elite players of the NHL, the guys who are at the top of the scoring list every year, those guys can do a lot with their feet moving. They can catch pucks and shoot pucks with their feet moving. They can shoot pucks on the fly with their feet moving. And they can shoot at different levels and hide the release all over the ice. And that's where I think it becomes important. And that's what we focused on with Matt, was hiding his release in all areas of the ice. On the inside bend shot, basically what we're trying to do is focus on the bend of the stick. So again, we catch the puck early off the inside foot, allow the puck to get no further than the outside foot, and then drop the hands right down on the stick to get that stick bend. And it's that stick bend is what we're trying to accomplish. So you catch it from the inside, you get it to the here, and then you fire in stride. So I can continue as I'm skating, catch that puck in that area right here, and then get it right to here and then drop my hands. And that is what allows me to get the puck off much, much faster than in any other traditional type shots. On the two touch, two touch is a very applicable skill. It happens all the time where players on his off wing but he, he hasn't had a chance to open up yet and the pass is coming early and it's ahead of him. 
So what most players have to do is they got to catch the puck, move the puck in position to shoot, and then fire it. What a two-touch does is it allows you to get, again shoot in stride, and again you're catching the puck off the off the front skate, allowing it to get to get to here. And what happens is you pull the puck back and step right into the shot on the next step. And that's the most important part is being able to catch it clean, pull the puck back into this area right here just off the front ski. So now when I step, my step right here, by having the puck right off this inside ski, that's what allows me to bend my stick and really fire it. A two touch is a very, very aggressive shot, aggressive shot and has one of the best shot releases that you can have in that type of a situation. The inside thrust, this is the, the reason why I call it a thrust is because that's exactly what's happening. What you're doing is you're propelling yourself forward into the shot. And this is what separates the guys who shoot really well off the inside foot and the guys who fall off the inside foot. What separates them is how aggressive they are with their skating that allows them to propel themselves forward. So what basically happens is a player has the puck out in front of them and as he thrusts himself right into the shot. And by thrusting himself, that's what creates that pace. And that's why we call it the inside thrust. It's a shot off the inside leg, but what it does is it allows you, because you're thrusting into it, is to bring all of your weight and transfer it onto the stick. And that's why it becomes such a very hard shot and tough for the goalie to pick up because you can hide the release point. One of the more important shots is being able to drag the puck or change the angle of the puck. One of the, when we started with Matt, this was one of the first shots that we, that we taught him because I wanted him to understand how important it is to pull the puck six, eight, ten inches in towards his body and drop his hands into the shot. Now as we got going and he got very good at being able to pull the puck in towards his body drop his hands and follow through, he felt the pace difference by doing that. Now he, he doesn't realize initially that by moving the puck 8 to 10 inches, it really dramatically changes the angle of the goaltender. Now it's one thing to be able to have a shot from 25 and 30 feet out that's an aggressive shot that makes it either hard to handle for the goalie or that you can beat him clean with but not all goals are scored from that distance. A lot of goals are scored from right here in the slot area. So you have to have quick hands and a quick release from here. And that's why we go to, we, when I was working with Matt, we would create an unusual surface, like the back of the net, or something that would give us a different, difficult rebound, whether it would come out bouncing or rolling, or at a different angle, which would force him to catch the puck outside of his body, pull it in, and fire it as quickly as he can. And there's a lot of times when he's shooting and he's doing this that he doesn't realize or you can't even tell that he's pulling the puck in. The fact is is that he's coming off the stick so quick it's tough to read. And that's just practice of him catching these pucks at unusual angles and not being afraid to shoot a puck that has a difficult puck like a rolling puck or a bouncing puck. And we can do that both on the forehand and on the backhand. Now the key to the whole thing is the front shoulder. So if you have your shot here and you catch the puck out, uh, out at this distance, what's important is that you don't allow your, your shoulder to stay back off the, off the puck. What will happen to most players, and with, with Matt when he first started, was he'd shoot the puck and leave his front shoulder back. The most important part is to be able to get the puck and follow through with your front shoulder to face the net. That will keep the puck inside the square of the net. The same thing on the backhand. When you're on the backhand and you catch the puck, the most important part is to square off this back shoulder and make sure that it can come off to that front post. That will allow you to shoot at all aspects or all areas of the net and keep the puck in the net area. So by not being falling off the shot, you can allow more pucks of yours when you're in this area to stay in the scoring area, which allows you to score a lot more goals. Right from day one, uh, having Daryl in my, my ear and uh, you know trying to keep things consistent, that was huge for me.